Hi guys and welcome to Feywood. So this is the next part of my costume where I make this glowing crystal headpiece. Um, I got the idea for how to do the crystals from a, another YouTube channel. Um, I don't know how you pronounce it, it's G-G-A-E-T-Z-Z, -Z, so Gigates or something like that. Um, I knew I wanted glowing crystals and I wasn't sure how to do it and she had made a glowing sword um, that looked like a crystal sort of sword and so I used a similar technique but I learned a few things trying to use her technique that I'll share as well. So you can see I've got these different water bottles and I've chopped the top of them off and then I'm cutting about four slits down um, the top and you don't need to be accurate in fact it's probably best that you're not um, keeping them uniform in the way they're spaced or how far down you cut because it makes them all end up looking different and more natural um, but I did learn that the type of bottle that you use really makes a difference um, so you can see my first attempt here is this smaller bottle which was a thicker plastic um, it doesn't have the like ribbed sides like the other ones did either. Um, I had so much trouble with this one and it was really making me disheartened because it was my first attempt. Um, the top just didn't really stick together properly like hers did. Um, I tried, as you can see, I'm trying to mush it down with my heat gun. So you're just using a heat gun, um, I, my heat gun is used for like stamp embossing and things like that. Um, I have seen people with more heavy duty heat guns but this one seemed to work fine. Um, but yeah I just had a lot of trouble and I wasn't sure if it was my heat gun or what. Um, I ended up melting holes in it and it just wasn't really working out too well. So I tried this other one and I also tried something to hold the top together so that I got a nice point to my crystal. Now doing the elastic band method I'm doing here worked perfectly so um, it can flick off while you're like heating it though so just keep an eye on it you might need to put the rubber band back on just make sure it's not pointed at your face or anything so it doesn't flick in your face um, but yeah look any um, embossing heat gun should work fine on these bottles they're quite thin so find one that's thin and ribbed. Um, they seem to melt better and um, reduce in size quickly. Uh, I didn't get any holes in these ones. Um, but sometimes the point, like the different um, parts of the point might bend around and move a bit. But I wasn't too concerned about it. And I'll show you later that, you know, if you've got a few little gaps in the plastic at the top or it moves around and you're not quite happy with the way it looks um, I actually use these cool little crystal plastic um, attachments on there to make it look even better so you just keep melting until it's quite small now I want enough room to fit fairy lights in there so I didn't make them too too tiny um, but you know you could probably melt them down a little bit further although at this point they didn't seem to want to go too much smaller. Now this is where I decide to paint um, the inside and I really want it to be translucent so what I did to try and achieve that was use some PVA glue mixed in with my paint um, and that way you know it would because because PVA dries clear um, I could sort of spread the paint thinner and it would stick um, better because the PVA would help it sort of adhere to the plastic. So that seemed to work out pretty well. Um, on some parts I did end up doing a second coat but do be very careful to make sure it's um, not a thick mixture like use much more PVA than you would the um, acrylic paint. Uh, you can always layer it up if you need more but you really want the lights to be able to shine through the colour um, so yeah definitely just keep it mainly um, glue with a little bit of paint in mixed in and I did a shading of pink through to blue um, 
I did wreck that brush in the meat while I did that, so um, maybe use an old brush you don't care about because trying to get in all those gaps, it really screwed up the brush. Now I need to work out the size of my head. So the best way to do headdresses like this, and I've done this before, is to use the glad wrap method with tape over the top. So it's just wrapping your head in glad wrap, um, nice and tight, a few nice wraps so it's you know thick. And then I'm just using a clear tape here. You could use a coloured tape or anything really. Um, you know, if you use a coloured tape, then you probably want to make sure it's either the colour of your headdress or that you're going to be covering it up. Um, and I wasn't sure how this was going to go, so I just used the clear tape at this point. Now I had these... Um, you know, string lights, the sort of LED um, wire lights. And what I did was portion them out so that um, there was a little bit of the lights in each of the crystals. And then I've just used a little bit of sticky tape to hold it in place before I attach it to the headpiece. Now to attach it to the headpiece, I've used Velcro here. Um, I want it to be removable, mainly just so that I can get batteries in and out, you know, if I decide that I want to wear it again, or, you know, for whatever reason, want to make sure that it, I can keep um, adding new batteries if I need to. Because I've fallen into that trap before with not thinking about the batteries and covering them up and then, you know, having to pull something apart to basically put batteries in it. So you don't really want to do that. Now to tack it onto the headpiece, I'm using the hot glue, but I really want strength in these. So I go um, around it with the E6000 glue. Um, E6000 doesn't dry instantly though, which is why I've needed a little bit of the hot glue to hold it in place um, while the E6000 dries. The other option, which I sometimes do when I'm gluing with E6000, is to use tape to hold things in place uh, while they dry. But yeah, the hot glue seemed to work out well. So I'm putting the battery pack at the back of the headpiece there and I'm just lining up the other side of the velcro bits so that I'll be able to attach and detach this battery pack. So at this point this is where I'm adding these cool little crystal um, plastic pieces that I got from eBay and I'll try and put a link to this um, in the description box for you guys but there seem to be a number of sellers of these little um, crystal plastic pieces and they worked out perfectly because they're clear they would let the light come through them as well and they're jagged and look natural like um, actual pieces of crystal so it's as if there's additional little um, crystallized things forming on top of the big crystal shards which I thought looked really cool and this allowed me to cover up any parts that I wasn't as happy with or some of the holes that had happened, um, you know, or in the, on the tips of each of the crystals, there were sort of gaps that were sort of unavoidable, um, or at least I, I didn't work out a way to, you know, completely seal up all gaps on there. Now, after I attached those, I actually decided I wanted some more, um, crystal pieces on there as well. So I ended up getting a few more bottles and doing exactly the same thing again. And in fact, some of these I end up using for other parts of my um, costume, which will be in later videos. So same thing with the paint. I really screwed up this paintbrush, so don't use a paintbrush that you like. I don't know what would happen if you painted it first and then tried to melt it. That could be one other way to get around um, the painting part of it. Uh, 
yeah, so you could definitely give that a go, but I don't know what the heat would do to the paint. So, but uh, by all means, that could be an option. And I didn't have purple lights for these front ones and I'd already glued the front ones on. Uh, sorry, the back ones I'd already glued on and put purple lights in. So I decided to use a blue set in these two front ones, which I thought looked pretty cool. Um, the paint was a little bit more opaque than I wanted for the front two, um, but I couldn't do anything once it was done. So you can still see the lights, but I just wished it was a little bit more see-through. Now I needed to put the second battery pack somewhere, so I've put it here at the front um, between all the crystals. And I will later hide the battery packs with the design. So you can see the um, crystal parts all lit up there. So I started with um, trying to cover up the battery pack here. Now I needed to be careful not to cover up the switch. Um, so I had to be a bit strategic with that. And I also had to be careful not to um, inadvertently glue this to the headpiece so that it couldn't be removed with the Velcro. So uh, I made sure everything was just attached um, in a way that I could still pull the battery pack off the Velcro. Now for added strength, I decided to just wrap each of the pieces with some wire that um, I could then glue and the glue would sort of hold those bits of wire in place and add a bit of structural stability to everything. Um, because of how big the crystals are, even though they're light, I wanted to just really make sure that they weren't gonna come off um, and there was no chance of, of anything you know, not being strong enough and coming off. Um, I then decided to actually incorporate some uh, real crystals in there that I had. And again, I've used the wire to help hold them upright and then some hot glue. So these crystals are made for jewelry and so they have a hole in them. And I fed the crystal through the wire and sort of wrapped the wire around the base of the crystal a little bit and then would continue wrapping the wire around one of the other plastic um, crystals to hold the crystal upright and the hot glue would then dry and hold it into place um, so that it stayed there. Now, if I had have had, um, you know, purple crystals um, or actual amethyst crystals, I would have probably used those just to go in with everything. But as it is, I actually quite like these ones. Um, and it is nice to have a bit of contrast, I guess, because you might not have seen the purple crystals. So I'm doing the similar thing with the front here. I'm using a piece of lace. Um, and I decided to go for a green piece because I'm really wanting to um, add some greenery and flowers and all sorts of things like that um, to really make this represent the flora and fauna around the um, world of the dark crystal. Because in the movie that was one of the big things that they did was to create um, all sorts of creatures and plant life that was completely alien and so um, so much work went into um, having every single thing be you know something from another world so I really wanted to try and have that captured in this headpiece. Now I've got this lovely um, moss it's like a preserved moss that I had on hand. Um, 
you can get a lot of this sort of stuff from Etsy, which is where I got mine. If you just look up moss or preserved moss in the crafting section, um, there's all sorts of options that you can find and use. And it just came in a bag of like loose little pieces of moss that you can clump and stick to things and all of that. So um, if you don't have moss, what I think would work really well um, and I've done before is um, different wool pieces. So if you have like even um, a ball of wool that has a lot of texture that looks a little bit natural, um, you could use that. Also you can use uh, wool tops, which is the fibres um, and things like that. So you know, use your creativity. Um, I would just recommend use what you have on hand. That's what I tried to do for mine. Um, I have, you know, all random sorts of fake flowers and bits of lace and that sort of thing. And, you know, I just pieced it together bit by bit, just adding bits here and there. My main concern though was strength. So I really tried to do a lot of layering up and be very generous with glue um, so that it all held everything together really well. Um, and then even after I'd glued things on, I would just come back and, you know, pour glue on top in certain spots um, just to, you know, add another layer of strength to everything. I had this little 3D sticker of a butterfly, so I added that on there as well, which I thought looked really pretty on the side. So you can see the battery pack's relatively hidden. I do add a few more bits and pieces on that as well. And I just start adding bits on. Um, I had these preserved flowers as well, which I added on. Um, and just all sorts of different like lace flowers or plastic stick-on flowers. Um, just a range of different things really. So this is a piece of wool um, with, you know, that's quite fibrous. So that's what I mean by um, potentially using a wool type of um, fiber if you don't have moss. And because you can pick up these ones that have, it's almost like a little grass or something like that. So you could either do it in a green color or you could keep it very um, unusual colors so that it looks very foreign and otherworldly. And I mean, this could be easily adaptable into different types of designs as well. Um, if you actually didn't want the flowers around the crystals and wanted it to be more dark, you could then, you know, um, change the design and maybe um, add just lots of black lace or something like that. Um, or if you wanted a bit of a uh, Snow Queen type of headpiece which I think this would work perfectly for you could keep all the colors very you know blue and purple um, or icy sort of colors um, you could add little snowflakes onto it there's all sorts of things you could do with this so I'm adding in some uh, fake leaves and flowers here on the side as well um, some more of these hydrangeas that are preserved.
So the design is quite busy because there's a lot of flowers and different colours and things. Um, but I feel like what unifies this is the moss um, and the green of the leaves. And at the front I put that piece of gold lace in there to make it look a bit more regal um, so that it did look sort of like a crown. So I'm just adding more layers um, as I go, making sure every um, section is covered of the glad wrap underneath. Um, and you know, the layers are gonna help with stability as well. Like I mentioned, just having lots of um, glue and the lace really soaks in that PVA glue and does add some strength as well. So that's it lit up. Um, with all the crystals and everything. Now to make sure that it sits really well on my head, um, I put some wire on the inside. So the first thing I just made sure I had the right length that would sort of fit almost like a headband um, on my head. Um, I did sort of a double layer and then one that went all the way around my head just as um, additional strength. And I just used sticky tape to join the ends and um, added that underneath. It really does help when you're making something like this to have a bust that has a head shape. So some sort of wig um, head bust is really, really helpful so that you can um, sit this on that while you're adding everything on to the design. So at first I just sticky tape this in place. So I've done one that's all the way around the rim of the headpiece and then a couple of pieces that come down a little bit further just so they grip my head a bit better. And what I will do is cover those in um, ribbon so that they're a bit nicer to look at instead of just plain wire. You could even decide to bring some more um, of your design down onto these pieces of wire. Just making sure though that they are still um, serving their purpose to hold it onto your head. Um, I did decide after trying it on my head that I needed a bit more stability which is why I added that last bit of wire at the back so that that piece would sit at the back of my head and really kind of hold this on. Now to make it all very strong I've added um, a load of hot glue and uh, ribbon over the top of the wire and I make sure to put the hot glue on either side of the wire and I'm very, very generous with it so that it really holds that uh, ribbon on top of it. You don't have to necessarily use hot glue, you could use um, some sort of super glue or something like that, but I chose hot glue because it dries much faster so the process is a bit quicker. And then I do the same thing here, I use the hot glue and I'm wrapping the ribbon around this wire. Now be very careful because it's easy to burn your fingers here, um, you may want to use gloves and I wouldn't do more than a little bit at a time because the glue does dry as soon as it starts to cool. So once it hits that wire, it starts to cool and if it cools too much, um, you can't attach the ribbon. 
And as a last little flourish, I decided to add this little green uh, mushroom because I thought, again, it looked a bit otherworldly and fit into my little garden headdress. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope you've got some inspiration from this headpiece um, and maybe decide to make something for yourself um, that's a crystal sort of headpiece. Um, and I can't wait to bring you guys the rest of my costume to come. There's all sorts of bits and pieces that I'm making. So thank you so much guys for visiting Feywood. Make sure you hit subscribe if you do like these videos and want to see more creative stuff from me and want to see the rest of the costume and eventually the goblin ball as well. Thanks for tuning in guys and I'll see you next time.